Wings of Glory, World War I. We've got some interesting house rules for this game in that at the start of the game, we haven't taken off. Knights of the Sky, the two groups, the two sides. I love big, big, big Wings of Glory games. We break up, we go to the opposite sides of the room, and you formulate your plan. Okay, we've got eight players. We're going to break it up two, two, and two, or four and four. Who's going to be the wingman? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Who are we going to target? Do we know the opposing planes, or is this kind of a, a blind draw type scenario? We formulate our plans. Then when you take off and the game begins, our house rule is we're in the sky. When you're programming your plane, there's no talking. You can make hand signals. Of course, we're going to talk trash but uh, to the opposing team and the opposing side. But in terms of, hey, Fritz, go over here, bank and turn in. Um, let them slow down and stall because you've got a tail gunner. Like, no, you just can kind of point because we're up there flying. We need to have a plan ahead of time. But that said, layering over the plan, there's there's certain fundamentals of Wings of Glory that we're looking for. There's certain things that we try to know as a team. And it might just be literally a new player shows up and it's like, look, we're trying to do these three things at all times. There is no communication needed because we're trying to do it. So if you see it, go for it. Or if you see us going for it, follow us as the wingman moving in. One of the important things is breaking up formations in Wings of Glory. You need to break up those formations. And how we kind of do that, the reason why a formation is so powerful, I should back up for a moment. The reason why a formation is so powerful is if you have two planes flying together, what this means is their firing arcs overlap. If they can essentially work as one, and move across a target, those are two planes shooting at one target. Depending on the range, essentially, it's more cards being piled on to the target. So it's just a way to, to maximize, literally, more shots firing in. Now, also working together as a pair means if a plane moves on your tail and you can't shake them off, it's, it's one thing if we're moving along and we're shooting. And look, I'm going to do my best not to get shot of course, that's a little bit more challenging in Wings of Glory because usually you have a fixed play mat, right? It's not the entire room because then we'll just like fly off. It's a fixed play mat. And if you leave the play mat, and there's different sizes that we play with. I won't say there's one standard size for the game. But if you fly off the play mat, uh, then you're out of the game. So because we are on this play mat, as we cross and turn, there are going to be times where someone's going to be able to fire off a shot and, and hit you. Hopefully that's at long range. What we're talking about is when you're navigating you and your wingman or, or two planes working in tandem together or a group, if it's four, if it's two, if it's three, what will happen is if someone can get behind you and now start following you and trailing you and you can't necessarily get rid of them, what this means is that's shots every single turn coming at you. What you do if you have um, a group is the plane that, uh, depending on, of course, what else is going on, it might be the most damaged plane or it might be the plane that has the least amount of damage, you will drop one of those planes back and now at least start shooting the plane that is tailing the group, is following it. And then that person at least needs, that pilot needs to make a decision, okay, stay on target because I'm blasting Fritz and... He's holding like 10 cards, damage cards in his hand, and it's crazy, and his rudder's jammed, and his engine's hit. Meanwhile, I'm like, I got like all zeros. I got every zero in the deck in my hand. That, that happened in the last game, and I just got to shake my head, where I'm dealing mad damage, right? I'm dealing mad damage uh, to this plane, drawing cards, drawing cards, keeping their, their face straight. Um, we do announce special damage with dramatics, so I, I know like, you know, I did jam the rudder. And we've got a couple of other things, but he's holding like 15 cards. And I shuffled the deck before. I always shuffle the deck. At the end of the game, um, I got shot down. A bunch of people got shot down. And at the end of the game, I'm like, look, I, I got to know. Show me your hand. And he's like, it's like zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, zero. Like every zero in the deck. It's like magnetically they, they gravitated to that one area. 
But jumping back to this, the plane drops behind and now you've got to make a decision. Do you stay on the target and continue to blast Fritz? Or do you bank off and get the heck out of there and look for another possibility, another opportunity? Most players, I will say, play conservatively. And you want to play conservatively in Wings of Glory because another tactica is mistakes are deadly. And people will, pilots will, make mistakes. So play defensive and be ready for when your opponent makes a mistake. Then you've got a player like me, which is just absolute glory. If I'm on your tail, I'm going to stick on that and I am going to gun you. And if you're someone is behind me shooting, well, I'll, I'll, I'm lucky, right? We'll see what happens. We'll see what you draw. So the importance of the formation. Breaking up the formation negates two of those things. It scatters the planes. So in scattering those planes, what this means is now they can't overlap fields of fire or it's harder. And second, if you can isolate and tail a plane, it's broken up. They're on their own. Or if it's four planes and it's two and two, there's at least only one to drop back. What's interesting with hand signals is if you've got four planes and you're tailing one and the other three planes drop back, all of a sudden you're like, I'm in trouble. I am in serious trouble. So as soon as we clear this command deck, um, I'm just like banking out of there and, and getting out of there. So how do we break things up? You, you break things up by trying to split the formation and trying to target. And this is where our hand signals come in. Often we'll just kind of do it under the table and stuff like that. You try and split by fire. Now, there's this idea on the way in called the joust. You start the game on opposite sides. You're moving forward. What you can do right there is essentially kind of trade shots, trade opening shots. I'm not saying it's the best tactic. It's one possible tactic. You do this um, because you say, well, there's a chance of dealing damage and the explosion and other effects are in that deck. I could draw it on that turn, but that's vastly different than now we're 10 or 15 turns in and there's like, you know, 10 cards left and no one's drawn the explosion yet. Probably next one you draw, it is going to explode. And I know some groups take the explosion out. Side note, I'm a fan of the joust. I want to get up there. I want to test your metal. I want to see what you have. Um, I would say as a more conservative player or a more tactical player, uh, we never want to trade equal shot for equal shot because then it's random. I might come up worse than you. I, I would rather not joust. But we're just using the joust as an example to illustrate ways of splitting. So if we're flying towards each other, two groups, and we're going to engage, then if you fire on one plane, or if you focus on two planes, they'll take a lot of damage, they'll clear through their moves, and then they're going to want to potentially pull off, get out of there. They potentially have no choice. And the way you can split, let's say we have four planes, send two planes up the center, send two planes to the right, have the two planes that are moving forward, have them fire on one of the other planes on the side. That's going to force that plane to potentially break off. Well, that plane's not going to break off into your other two planes that you're flying or the group because it's just going to get hit in that crossfire. They're going to break off and split and go to the part of the table where no one's there. Now, you don't chase after them. You've now, if I have four planes, I've reduced four and four, my four planes to your three planes. We're looking, how can you split the group? And of course, sometimes pilots will stay focused and not split off. They'll eat the shots. They're not happy they'll eat it. And other times people will bug out at that first opportunity. In terms of splitting, I find uh, this goes back to our communications ahead of time. We fly together as a team. Stick to the plan. Myself included. Fritz, tabletop glory. Stick to the plan. I'm like, we're good. We're good. The bigger the game, um, the more – the bigger the game with Wings of Glory, and Wings of Glory uh, scales fantastically, the greater the chance of splitting players because you do have to coordinate things. Or uh, this is not a criticism. A player might think, well, I, I don't want to get blown up because then I'm going to hear about it from Fritz and the other guys all week. So I'm going to – I'm out of here. I'm going to pull off. I'm going to pull away. I can't take this type of firepower. Well, now we split you. Where if you're controlling four planes, yes, that's a pilot on there. We're putting ourselves in the narrative. But if you are controlling multiple planes, then it's easier um, to step back tactically and say, okay, I'll eat the shots and take it. It's harder to split.
But that is your mission, Knights of the Sky, working together as a group and then looking and saying, how can you split? How can you split these other planes?